Hello, friends. Welcome to this episode of Real Truth Real Quick, where we talk about life, leadership, and the world we live in. I'm Todd. This is my friend Gary Haugen, who is president of the International Justice Mission, which is one of the most amazing organizations that you can find. And I want you to go to IJM.org to find out more about it. But we're here today to ask ourselves this question. What is compassion fatigue? And really, frankly, what can we do about it? The scriptures say this, Gary. It says, so as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, Put on a heart of compassion, mm. kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So sometimes, and this is what compassion fatigue is, we're going to set it up. It's um, You and I both remember where we were. We were alive in 1999 when Columbine, this mm. first really massive high school shooting happened in, in our country. I can remember where I was when I heard about what was going on. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Just a systematic elimination of children, the way it was planned. But since then... I mean, my goodness, we had the stuff down at Newtown, we had stuff in Orlando, we had stuff in, in Florida, and shootings, and they go on and on and on. And eventually you kind of go, yep, there's another one. Right. And then there are just a lot of things going on around the world. Right. You were involved with our Justice Department's investigation of the genocide in Rwanda. Right. And there's all kinds of genocides that continue to happen around the world. How can I care about all of them? Mm. And um, this thing called compassion fatigue, which I stopped caring, yeah. how do we deal with it? Yeah. Well, you know, the word compassion is these two Latin words, cum, with, and passio means suffer. So it actually means to suffer with. Mm. So, of course, we're going to get tired of, we're going to be overwhelmed by drawing close to the pain of other people. But we are, we're clearly called, when we love someone, to care about, especially their pain and suffering. And to be weird, we would not feel loved if no one wanted to draw near to us mm -hmm. when we were hurting. So it is a great question. How do we, though, do this for the long haul? I think, number one, the thing that I find is that we should be inspired by individuals, not overwhelmed by abstractions. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we read abstractions about a genocide or sh shootings or whatever in the newspaper and in the media, and we allow ourselves to be completely overwhelmed by the abstraction. But if we were to draw close to an individual, someone who is actually uh, suffering and hurting, that actually is quite inspiring because you, you, you come close to the human element. So that's the first thing I would say. We should actually move ourselves closer to actual people who are suffering rather than just preoccupying ourselves with the abstraction. Mm -hmm. The second thing is to do it in community. That is, serve and love others supported by others. That's why doing it with a group in your church or Others who are involved were not meant to do this as Lone Rangers. Jesus didn't do it as Lone Ranger. Mm -hmm. He brought together a community. But then, I think thirdly, is, is, is a spiritual discipline that's surprising. It's called the spiritual discipline of joy. Mm -hmm. At IJM, we're immersed in the ugliness of suffering and violence every day. But you know what we do as a discipline? We come up for air to find joy, to find laughter, to, def to find beauty, to have a great meal, to be with people who make us laugh. Why? Because joy is the oxygen of doing hard things. When I got on this airplane to come down to Dallas, they said, secure your own oxygen mask before assisting others. And if you're going to assist others through pain and difficulty, it's really important to sustain your own source of joy. Mm -hmm. What brings you back to life? Of course, we're not, we're not meant to be in the darkness and the suffering all the time. We're meant to be there for times of service, but come back up for air with your community. Find laughter, find the goodness and beauty of God so we can equip you to go back into the struggle. Boy, I love that. Let me just, on that first statement you made about just the individual. Yeah. I think when you even care about like lost people, sometimes it's just easy for us not to have compassion for those folks who don't know the gospel. Right. And if you talk about all the lost people that are in the world, like they're nameless, faceless phone book right. people. It's hard to really care, yeah. but when you identify that with somebody who is that you know that's caught in the bonds of addiction or just lost in the apathy of kind of in the get along everyday world, yeah. and you see the way that they're trapped and you 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 care for them as individuals, it does move you forward. And so um, I, I love the comment on that. So one last thing, I know at IJM one of the things you guys do every day, the way you go to war is by being individuals that are involved in the spiritual discipline, not just of communal fellowship and not just of, uh, of 
praise and reminding ourselves of all that is right and good and finding joy in what you're doing, but just also the discipline of, of prayer. And talk about how a believer in their abiding, mm. right? Because compassion and well, kindness is a fruit of the Spirit, right? right? And, we're, and we're to put it on. Right. So how do, we, how do we put on compassion? What's the role of prayer and spiritual disciplines in not getting fatigued because we're not doing it in our own work? Yeah, well, our, our spiritual adversary will take whatever we give him. So if we have a hard heart and don't want to even look at this stuff, he'll say, fine, let's not look at it, let's go over here. But if we do have a soft and tender heart and we draw close to it, he's gonna say, well, fine, let's do nothing but dwell on that darkness all the time. It's part of this prayerful community together where we also bring what's hurting and discouraging to us to God prayerfully. We don't try to all just sort it out within the caverns of our own heart. We lament, we are honest to God, we cry out to God like the psalmist does and says, this is hurting, this is hard. And we allow God to minister to us through that life of prayer, but also in community with fellow believers. So we have the strength, so we don't lose heart in doing good. Because he says we will uh, reap a harvest if we don't give up. That's right. Don't grow weary in doing good, for in due time we'll reap if we don't grow weary. So let's stay at it, friends. Let's be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our toil is not in vain. Um, one of the phrases I love, Woodrow Wilson, one of our presidents, said this, I'd rather be the, 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 the loser in an ultimately victorious cause mm. than the winner in an ultimately defeated one. Mm. And we are going to win. And one of the things that helps us to kind of continue to persevere is that we know Jesus says, hey, we're going to take care of this evil and injustice that's in the world. Hey, thank you, Gary, for what you do at IJM Grateful in, to get and to leading us out. We did another episode with you called um, What Can I Do Locally to Deal With to Fight Against the Global Injustices Out There? You want to watch that one in conjunction with this one. We're grateful for you, and we're grateful for you guys the way you watch with us every week. And uh, tune in next time for another episode of Real Truth Real Quick. Real Truth Real Quick.